Scott in a t-shirt. I went to the Paul's Book Club up there like I usually do for my wine auction. So that happened, we got $1,100 for them. And then we saw something that Scott, I don't know Scott would like. This is a gift, Scott. This is a, a drone, the drone bowl. Presents. Yay, presents. Yeah. And, and as appreciation, I'll have a we'll take a picture and have an auction maybe next week. Um, I got a really nice. Stainless steel salmon as a token of appreciation from the other club that we can auction off. Really? Oh, great. <laughs> um, only when you're in the refrigerator. And I also went to the Seattle Four Club. It's a big club up there. And we, we, we sang the same, same song as we sang today. Oh, good. I sang sat next to... Uh, but not quite as well, I bet. Probably not, because they, they had a good banjo. Really? Oh, well, we should have had ukulele. Anyway, thank you very much, Mark. That was great. Um, Dale, you have something you wanted to do? I was just going to quickly remind people that tonight at 7 o'clock at the Grayton Community Hall will be a candidate forum, another one, uh, put on by Legal Women Voters for all the candidates for the Hospital Board. So I would love to see friendly faces. Thank you. It's at 7 o'clock. Okay, and as earlier, I just announced the um, presence of Brad Shaver here. He's a prisoner of Forest Hill, one of my patients, and he's going to tell us about the history of falconry, and of course, he's going to show you a falcon as well. Brad Shaver. I guess not. First, I'll tell you a little history. Um, this the oldest practicing sport in the world, and it dates back to the 3,500 BC. And uh, they have pictures from China of definitely 2,500. And um, the mic is Okay, how's that? <laughs> He looks good. Um, and uh, the interesting thing about it is that uh, it started kind of in Mongolia and China and, and Iraq. Believe it or not, it's been, uh, pretty much where it really started. Um, the Genghis Khan used eagles on his marches to conquer land and, and he used about 60 to 100 eagles to feed the troops. Because if you can imagine trying to shoot a, a deer in the open country, really hard in the air. So they used the eagles. The eagles can take big deer, fox, wolf. They're amazing. And it came to Britain in the middle, mid uh, oh, 1600s. It basically was a sport of king because it took so much time, so much time practices that they were the only ones that had time. So they had keepers of falcons and it was a big deal for them. And then moving on to the United States, came here in the early 1600s. There's not very many people practicing. There was a few and that was it. So um, this bird is terrible. They're the fastest bird in the world. You can dive over, they clock it over 300 miles an hour. When she hit the duck, she said 200 miles an hour. Uh, when she pulls up her, her talons in her cheek and she smacks it. Because if you grab the stair in the feet, she rips her, her, her toes right off. So they keep the back talon out, so like that brings the cross in. Most of the parabens um, take care of that old falcon. There's different species that you use in falconry. And the, the premier one is this bird, the parrot. And then there's Puyo's, red tails, and such. And then there's Simplers, Cooper's Hawk, and long tails, different. And they have all different flying textures. 
This I prefer this bread because she's so much fun. I've got so much bread. And um, I originally got into the sport because. He's afraid of really sorry. He's afraid of the bird. Look at right in the eye of the chest. No. no. <laughs> Just lucky that they didn't go and grab that fish over there on that table. <laughs> you turn it up. I'll speak louder too. So anyway, I got into the sport when I was 15 years old, a friend of my brother had birds, and I said, I want a bird. So I got a license, and back then it was $15, and you have to had to be licensed then, as well as now. And so I found a red tail's nest and tried to get up there with about 120 feet. I couldn't make it. All right, I used my brother's football cleats. I unscrewed the cleats and kept the spikes on there, but I couldn't quite make it. So I had a friend of mine who was at a tree service, and he went up and got for me. He goes, you didn't get up this high on a tree. And I said, yeah, I did. He was scratch marks. He said, I'll be done if you did. So they recruited me at 15 to be in the tree business, and that's what I've done ever since. <laughs> <laughs> They're first of all. Um, now, you have to have a federal and state license to have birds of prey. And this particular bird is protected from the migratory very bad. And in 1968, they were pretty well devastated from the United States. There was only 35 pair 